Hey everyone, it's Cam again. Sorry for the delay, I haven't posted a video in a while. I did post a video last week, but something happened with the the upload and it was really bad quality and something was messed up or the sound was weird. Anyway, I had to delete it. Uh, so, I did have a video, Introduction to Studies, so that's um, where I'm at now. I'm actually doing a study, so here it is. Hope you're happy. So, yeah, anyway, uh, I've got an actual schedule for doing these studies, so I'll be doing them every day. I'll be doing master studies, photo studies, still lifes, and other, other things that are helpful. And talking about how you can do your own, because that's how you're going to learn. You'll you may get encouraged and learn some different things from me, but you'll learn the most when you do them yourself. So the basic procedure, this is a still life. Um, I've just got some objects, a variety of materials and shapes and things. And the basic process is um, how I always do my still life, which is just to rough it in to kind of just get something down and loosen up a bit and then drop the opacity and then come in and refine the shapes a bit more refine the drawing more and then depending on whether I'm happy at it, with it at that stage I'll make a new layer and then refine it further so the objects I have here is this little drawing mannequin um, a bottle, some f negative film, a little metal ball clip and a CPU fan. Nothing special but um, I mean no matter what you no matter what you're painting with a still life it's gonna help you. Um, but I do encourage you to try different materials because and especially if you're doing different materials um, put them in the same still life because then you compare how the values are changing you can really see that when it's in the one picture so you may have metal next to say leather or something and you can see how the the values and textures and things really um, are differentiated so that when you apply that to your work from imagination that's going to really um, add that realism and readability to your work because your work from imagination is going to come from you know doing doing good work from imagination is going to come from doing good work from study from the real thing because we fill our visual library by studying studying reality and then our imagination is going to be a combination of um, kind of pulling things out from our visual library and putting it into an interesting uh, context. So now that I've finished the lines, I've dropped, uh, dropped the opacity and put a layer under it. I'm just blocking in some rough rough values and colour. Being very rough at this stage and very general. Just to get some base colours down. And I like this approach because I'm not I'm not getting overwhelmed. I'm just keeping the flow up. Staying happy, I've got my classical music on, so my solo piano, just enjoying, enjoying the time, enjoying painting, and then coming in with some more variation of value. Um, I'm trying to think more about value than the color here. If if you were to see the color, I mean that that little um, pole for the stand of the mannequin isn't like a yellowy color; it's very gray, but just because I'm trying to 
think more about value. I'm just using using that shade. And I can always I can always come in and bring more colour in and correct things later. So that's the joy of digital. I mean it's good to be prepared and be very decisive, but remember that it's digital and you can afford to make mistakes. Another thing that I'm thinking about is uh, shapes. So really trying to bring in the shapes and then I can bring in some variation to those shapes. So they're kind of abstract forms within the within the image. I'm also eyedropper blending a lot. I've mentioned this and you you may already know about it, but if you don't, eyedropper blending is to hold alt while you have the brush tool selected and it will select the eyedropper and that will allow you to pick colors from around the canvas and be able to switch to that color and as soon as you let go of alt it will switch back to the brush so it's really handy for blending your colors and when you're working uh, with the with any brush with opacity jitter on by pram pressure or if you're functioning that manually when you lay two colors over the top and because they're semi-transparent or semi-opaque you'll get an in-between color because they're mixing and yeah just just with all things try these yourself um, I encourage you to start out simply with just a single object and then as you get more confident uh, start adding objects and trying different things a good thing to start out with is something like an apple or a bit of fruit um, or something really basic it might even just be a little um, box or like a basic cardboard box or a little USB key, whatever it is, start out simple just to understand the process and then um, yeah, really explore the different materials and objects that you'll find in life. I, I really enjoy if I go for a walk, I might see um, some nice flowers or something. Might just collect a few flowers and then paint them. Or you find interesting things like sometimes it might be garbage collection day and you just find some interesting objects. Like I found an old paint can but it had really rusted out so it had some really cool textures that I was able to learn a lot from painting it and I paint things like teapots and things like that yeah, anything you find interesting really and you'll no matter what it is you're going to learn a lot about drawing and to learn a, bit, a lot about color seeing color and accurately perceiving value and all these things so everything is going to be helpful and I believe that Drawing from life is the the best practice, and then in addition to that, is to immediately take what you learn from drawing from life and try to apply it from imagination. So, if I was to do do that, I might then just redraw something from imagination and just try to perhaps redraw this mannequin in a different pose from imagination and try to apply 
and really test my visual memory from, with what I've learned from the study. Or in that same principle, um, if I now understand what a wooden object looks like, I might not draw a human looking mannequin, but I might draw, say, like a a dog looking mannequin or something like that, an animal looking mannequin, and just draw that in a different pose and try to apply those same um, things that I learnt with how the materials look and the colours and values. So um, that's just a suggestion and I'm sure you guys are creative so um, you can think of how else you could apply it and really invent new ways because I believe we we learn a lot by not so much just copying things but really thinking of um, different ways we can do it ourselves and inventing those ways. Just puffing in some reflected light there. So that, that's one huge thing that studying um, from life teaches you a lot about is form and lighting and if you have if you have nice lights really set up the lighting well but it's all helpful and just persevere with it practice and get better even if you fail you've still learnt something and yeah thanks for watching